Well, hello, and welcome to this episode that I want to start with a question. Do you give in your relationships until it hurts? Do you feel responsible for everyone else's feelings and their problems and their situations? Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to understand the warning signs for being codependent. So I'm going to walk you through the eight signs that I've seen over the last 25 years that really indicate codependency so that you can start to focus on your own side of the street and your own life. If you are new to my channel, well, welcome. Please introduce yourself in the comments. We are a very friendly, friendly group. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't and hit that bell so that every time I do something new, you will get it. If you don't know me, my name is Terry Cole and I'm a licensed psychotherapist and the author of Boundary Boss, The Essential Guide to Talk True, Be Seen, and Finally Live Free that you can get at BoundaryBossBook.com. And I want to start by just saying thank you so much for all of your comments because you know I read them all and I love to highlight them. So in this episode, I'm highlighting Ashley Garcia left a comment under my vlog, accepting and respecting other people's boundaries. And Ashley wrote, this topic is so important. I've been struggling with this. Not knowing how to accept no's can make us bitter even if we are active in codependency healing, which is so true. Uh, this is beautiful and enlightening. Thank you, Miss Terry Cole. Why, you are so welcome, Ashley. I am so grateful that you are here. So before we get started with this episode, please make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notified when I do anything new, and hey, give it a thumbs up if you like the content of this video. So let's start with codependency. What are the signs? I think there is so much confusion. I cannot tell you guys how many emails I get asking me, how can I tell if I'm codependent? Maybe I'm just being caring. Are you positive that it's codependency? So let's just start with. First one is that you have communication challenges. This is a warning sign, which means that you have trouble articulating your own feelings and emotions. You might be an expert at the feelings and emotions of the people in your life, but you are not well-versed at effectively communicating your thoughts and feelings. All right, the second one, you are a people pleaser. So what does this mean? Well, if you have the disease to please, I like to say, you really prioritize other people's needs above your own. You say yes when you wanna say no, you avoid confrontation at all costs, and you apologize often, not only when you're not sorry, but when you are angry. So if any of that sounds familiar, you are probably a people pleaser, which really means that you're looking outside of yourself for validation, but also that you're afraid of conflict. You're afraid if you do something that displeases someone else, you're afraid of what's going to happen. You don't want to have that conversation. And being a people pleaser, all of these symptoms of codependency are exhausting. You know why? Because being actively codependent is friggin' exhausting. It takes up so much bandwidth, which is why I want you to be cured of this ailment. And you definitely can. Don't worry. Even if it's chronic, it does not have to be fatal. All right. The next sign is that you are an auto fixer. Someone has any situation in their life. And part of being an auto fixer is because you feel other people's feelings as if they are your own, which also would put you in the category of being an empath. But if you immediately jump to solve someone else's problem, if you immediately start looking to Google, someone tells you they've got an issue and you're on Google trying to figure out what they should do, or you immediately give them your opinion, and what you think that they should do, that is someone who is an auto fixer and you're uncomfortable with someone else having a problem, which is really what is inspiring you to give auto advice, even when people aren't asking for it. And I have to say, as much as this might be a quality or a behavior that you think is helpful to others, I bet if you ask the people in your life, if you're doing this, 
or maybe you were on the other end of an auto fixer, they would be honest and say, at least half the time, when people are talking to us about issues or situations they're in, what they really want is to be heard. And so auto advice giving, whether you're on the receiving end, and if you're on the receiving end, then you know how frustrating it is. But think about it, if you're an auto advice giver, that frustration is what other people are experiencing because you are relating to them in a codependent way as if their problem is your problem. And keep in mind, you guys, I am a recovering codependent, so you know, right? I'm not judging you now or ever. I'm literally never judging you. I want to help you change this behavior pattern in your life and in your relationships because you will be so much happier when you are not actively doing this. Okay, the next sign of being codependent is being a boundary disaster. Because the nature of, the the sheer um, definition of codependency incorporates disordered boundaries. Because we're constantly anticipating what other people need. We're not asking them, right? An appropriate boundary would be asking. When you are a boundary disaster, you're either making people responsible for the way that you feel and what's happening in your life, or you're taking responsibility for how they feel and what's happening in their life. So either way, having disordered boundaries is an integral part of being actively codependent. And again, it's so friggin' exhausting. Another indication that you are codependent is that you ignore, deny, or minimize problems in your own life. So let, let's play this out a little bit. What would that look like? Well, if someone is behaving badly towards you or someone exploded at you for some reason, or you had some kind of a nasty interaction with someone, if you then sort of make an excuse for why they behave that way. If you go, oh, you know, I know they're really stressed at work. I know they didn't mean it. It's, I don't want to make a big deal out of it. That is ignoring or denying a problem. And again, so much of what goes into being codependent, at least when I was actively codependent, I thought I was just being a good person. I thought I was being understanding. But the more I dove into it in my own therapy, in my actual own personal therapy, the more I realized that I was denying a problem because I didn't have the skills to confront the person or the situation. I was too afraid of my own anger. I was too afraid of other people's anger. And so therefore, there really is um, some secondary gain, as we call it psychologically, in denying The problem and denial itself, as you know, is one of the main psychological defense mechanisms that our mind will use to protect us from discomfort or pain. Now, you can become aware of what you're denying, though, because here's the thing. We might avoid the pain in the moment by not having the conversation that that we need to have But what ends up happening is that we have more long-term pain and frustration because our own feelings, that moment, that interaction, that doesn't just disappear. If your feelings are hurt by someone because of an interaction that you had, even if you deny it to yourself for whatever your reasons are, it's like it doesn't go away. It doesn't just disappear. You know, Freud talked about human beings and our feelings like um, pot belly stoves, right? So we're the people are the pot belly stoves and the feelings are like the smoke. And when we deny certain feelings, it's as if you have a burning fire and you say to yourself, oh, I'm going to stuff some paper down this flue and then that will make the smoke disappear. Now, of course, we know somewhere down deep in our heart of hearts, that is not going to make the smoke disappear. That is gonna make the smoke come out all of the side, nooks and crannies, any crack in that pot belly stove is where that smoke will be pouring out. But what ends up happening is that because we're denying how we feel, we don't understand 
when we're displacing our aggression, right? That's the smoke coming out of a crack in that pot belly stove. We don't understand why we're so pissed off about traffic or we're so pissed off of that, you know, this thing that was supposed to be delivered didn't get delivered today. That is displaced aggression or taking it out on someone who is less threatening than the person that you're denying the problem with. So it might be your partner that you're less threatened by. Maybe, maybe the issue is with your boss and then you find yourself coming home and taking it out on a child, being, being just more snippy than you need to be with your partner because that's the smoke needing to come out. And then your partner's like, why, what's the problem? Again, it gets so, why codependency creates so many problems in our relationships is because it's so confusing. It makes us feel confused about our own feelings, which is why I'm doing this episode on it. Okay, the next indication of being codependent is being self-sacrificing, where you are sacrificing what you want and what you need for other people. So it might look like helping others to the point of being a detrimental to your physical, mental, spiritual, financial well-being, right? So that is being self-sacrificing where you don't, you don't do things for yourself that would make you feel better, that would allow you to rest or like your self-care isn't great because you feel like there is someone else who always needs something else or that you should be doing something more productive. Um, so self-sacrificing is definitely a telltale sign of being codependent. And then we have the unhealthy helping, which is where you are doing things for others that they can and should do for themselves. So this is a lot of times we're not even being prompted, right? Someone hasn't even asked us for our help but we are anticipating what we think they need and doing it for them, being overly helping. But what happens is, I call it unhealthy helping, and that's actually a phrase coined by Sean, mm, what is her name? Oh, it'll come to me, but don't worry, I'll put it in the show notes, because she has a book out called Unhealthy Helping. And I love that book so much because it really, sheds this light on the difference between actually helping and unhealthy helping, meaning you are being motivated and driven by something other than your love or other than kindness. And so much of the time we like to see ourselves as really, I'm just doing this to be loving. I'm just doing this to be kind. And I have to tell you, when I was in my 20s, I really did feel that way. I believed that. I had no idea that codependency was an overt and or a covert bid for control, right? Controlling the lives of others because that other person's life being a disaster was giving me stress, pain. I was such an empath. I didn't realize that though. I really believed that my motivation was strictly love, strictly to add value. So listen, I'm not saying that those things are mutually exclusive right? You can do both. You can actually care about someone, but if you're going to cure yourself, if you're going to get better from codependent behaviors, you have to be honest with yourself about what is going on. And another thing that goes along with this is overgiving, where you get invited to a potluck for, let's say the holidays. And you know, if people are gathering by then, um, and they say, please bring one thing. And you bring two appetizers, one dessert, and a main dish. Like just over giving. Um, more than needs to happen. Same thing if you're doing this at work. You may be on a team at work and you're over functioning because over giving and over functioning really fall into the same category. Um, and that really is giving till it hurts as well, right? It hurts you actually. So, that is my, my, my top list. And I wonder how many of those things you identified with. 
if you are interested in getting better, right? Because you can really heal. This is behavior. This isn't like something wrong with you. I actually created an amazing course that is launching very soon with a close pal of mine, Mark Groves, and online he's called uh, Create the Love. You probably know his work. His, his stuff is so great. And we found each other because we are both obsessed with helping others heal from codependency because of how much pain it caused us in our lives. So I've been on his podcast a bunch of times. He's been on my podcast a bunch of times. And a lot of times we end up talking about codependency because it is so um, fixable. It is so curable. And yet you really just need someone to walk you through the process because I think that there is so much confusion about what is codependency. Like what actually is it? So if you're interested, go to terrycole.com forward slash CC for crushing codependency. Um, and that will give you all the information that you need. We start on November 3rd and Mark and I would love to spend the next bunch of weeks with you walking you through this process because wouldn't it be amazing to just float into 2022 feeling really um, empowered in your relationships and in your life and not feeling utterly exhausted all the time getting it all done but undoing yourself in the process wouldn't it be amazing because I promise you I was you and you can absolutely learn something new and stop these codependent behaviors in your life. I've also created a downloadable guide for you that goes along with this episode so you can have the whole entire list and see where do you see yourself in that process. I hope that this added value to your life. If it did, please share it on your social media platforms, post on your Instagram stories. I love to repost your stuff. You guys know I also read all your questions, see all your comments, I super duper appreciate you being a part of my crew. And if you suffer from codependency, I would love to see you in crushing codependency. Again, just go to terrycole.com forward slash CC to join me and Mark Groves and lots of other human beings from all over the world. And as always, take care of you.